Hello everybody and welcome to one more video. My name is Brian Dennis and this is Plant Based Peace. Where we aim to achieve the ultimate health and fitness. Today we're going to explain what whole foods are and why you should be eating them. On my other videos you may have heard me saying that one of the mistakes I used to make at the beginning was not eating enough whole foods. And what are whole foods? I'm just going to show you. So, so, we've got here a potato and then we've got here a crisp. What do you think is the whole food? Yeah, exactly. The whole food, the original state of a food before it was processed into something else, like a crisp. So here we've got an orange and an orange juice, whole food, processed version. Another example is a tomato or the tomato sauce, whole food, processed version. Or another example, whole grain rice and a rice cake, whole food, processed version. Olives, the whole food. And then we've got extra virgin olive oil, which is the processed version. I think by now you cannot get it. What is the benefits of whole food versus a processed version? One of the most important concepts that you need to understand about nutrition. Why? Why is... I had a train coming earlier and now I had a plane. They just love interrupting me, man. Cheers, bro. Cheers, mate. As I was saying, one of the most important concepts that you need to understand about nutrition is that food comes in a package. The package in which whole foods come normally have the necessary tools that your body needs to digest and absorb all its nutrients in the best way possible in the least harmful way. A great example of this would be how your body manages your sugar levels in your bloodstream. So on one hand we've got an orange. Orange comes with the fiber with all the vitamins and minerals that slows down the digestion and absorption of that sugar making sure that the sugar levels in your blood are at a stable balance. And then we've got an orange juice that because it doesn't have the fiber it's gonna make the digestion and absorption of the sugar very quickly therefore for rising your sugar levels too much too quickly. You may have heard of that phenomenon called sugar spikes of insulin spikes in your blood or hyperglycemia. And after that reaction, the insulin drops your sugar levels in your blood. What happens is that it does it too much, creating something called hypoglycemia. And then we've got the same exact process but happening with fat. Eating a non whole food, for example, refined extra virgin olive oil, even if it's organic, even if it's cold pressed, it will create a spike of fat, meaning that there's going to be way too much fat in your blood. Similar to sugar spikes, fat spikes are really harmful for the body, it's gonna lower the oxygen oxygen content in the blood is gonna compromise artery function so in short when you eat a whole food there is no hyper no hypoglycemia caused in the process but when you eat the refined version causes both and the same with the fats if you eat the whole food it's gonna come with enough tools to allow your body to manage those fat levels to be able to stay in control but if you eat the refined version it's gonna cause hyperlipidemia which has all sorts of bad effects coronary heart disease among others another benefit of eating whole foods is that when it comes with a whole package it's normally nutrient dense and low caloric for example and going back to the comparison with olives and olive oil 100 grams of the whole food olives has 175 calories and that includes some fiber some proteins some vitamins and minerals as well as those healthy fats however 100 grams of the processed version extra virgin olive oil has 830 calories and it doesn't have the fiber or the protein or the minerals or vitamins it just includes the fats because it's lost its package its case is covered so the whole food version is going to give you a lot more nutrients it's going to make you feel full for longer and in general it's going to contain less calories and funny enough because that will create a balance in your body even though it's got less calories it's going to make you feel like you've got more energy like me <laughs> okay brian that is simple enough but what about those processed foods that are actually quite popular among vegans and whole food plant-based eaters for example tofu vegan milks nut butters and that is a great question i'm so glad you asked one good way of knowing if the processed version of a whole food is harmful or not is the caloric load vegan mix are okay because even though a cup of almonds may have something between 450 to 500 calories a cup of almond milk would only have 36 to 39 calories so when it comes to vegan milks in general they are absolutely okay because they have a low caloric content the nut butters well there is a little bit of a debate about it it seems to be a correlation between the caloric load and those fat blood spikes for example on one hand you've got dr michael gregor found of nutritionfacts.org and author of the best-selling book of plant-based whole food nutrition how not to die which i totally recommend by the way and then on the other hand we've got dr essel steins if you're watching this video doctor i uh, haven't pronounced your name right please let me know in the comments and i will correct it dr gregor said go ahead with the nut butters dr essel steins says eat sparingly because it's got very high calorie content and that can cause epilipidemia or that fat blood spike that i told you about before i'm reading about it in both their websites the conclusion that i reached is 
And the conclusion that I reached is that nut butters are still considered whole foods. However, you should eat them sparingly because they have a very high caloric content and it's been proved that that can cause sudden excesses of fat in your blood. What about tofu? Tofu is slightly refined, right? Tofu is pretty much soya after they've removed all their shells. So it's a slightly processed. There is no scientific evidence that proves that tofu is bad for you. In fact, there is plenty of evidence that tofu can help prevent certain cancers. All things considered, it's not like it resembles nothing like the original food, for example, a crisp. <laughs> What about smoothies, you may be wondering? Oh, Brian, please tell me that smoothies are okay. I love smoothies. Right, so good news. Smoothies are mostly okay. It's actually a little bit of a gray area. It depends on the fruits. So, for example, bananas have shown that when blended, not only it doesn't cause a sudden increase in the sugar levels in your blood, but actually helps manage it. So, if you stick to your banana smoothies along with some veggies and some berries, then it's absolutely okay. But when it comes to fruits like oranges or apples or pineapples or mangoes, studies have shown that it can cause hyperglycemia and other nasty side effects. So, I would say the best way to keep up with what type of fruits you can use in your smoothies is to keep an eye on the latest studies that you would be able to find in websites like nutritionfacts.org. Don't worry, I'm gonna leave a link in the description of the video. If you discover anything interesting, let me know in the comments. Really hope I haven't made it more confusing than it was at the beginning, but I totally relate, bro, honestly. Let's get this message. Whole foods are going to be beneficial in most of the occasions. That's why the plant-based whole food diet comes from. It could also be called whole food, plant-based, and it's slightly processed, plus a few exceptions and not certain fruits-based diet, but who's gonna remember that, right? In a nutshell, to resume everything we have talked about, whole foods are going to be more nutrition in most of the occasions if you're going to eat a processed version of a whole food make sure to check the caloric content because if it has a lot of calories it could be harmful for you blend your fruits and veggies by stay away from oranges and apples and fruits that could be too sweet and keep an eye on the latest studies shown in dr michael gregor's website and dr elson's website which is what I've got the most of the information that I've used in this video. I invite you to share with me any knowledge that you acquire. Definitely let me know in the comments. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you next week.